narcotic. We got enough crews upstairs as far as salvage. Yeah, copy that. What you were just seeing was chimney fires. And uh, chimney fires are basically where this creosote, which is, uh, it's from the sap in wood, it vaporizes as the wood is being burned. And then as that hot smoke comes up the chimney, it condenses on the stove pipe and solidifies. And it's like, kind of like tar. And so what happens is it starts building up more and more into a stovepipe and, uh, and it can get so much creosote in a stovepipe if you let it go long enough and if you're burning wet wood or wood that is not thoroughly cured and things like that, it can build up to such an extent that all that creosote, which is flammable, can actually uh, catch on fire and start a very dangerous fire um, that can potentially burn your house down if you're not careful. So uh, it's a really good idea to at least once a year, if not twice a year, um, check your stovepipe and brush it if necessary. Uh, it, it's not a bad idea to check it more frequently than that, especially when you're just getting started with a new uh, location, a new stove, new types of wood, that sort of thing. And you'll start to get the hang of, of uh, how frequently you need to, uh, to burn the, or to brush the stovepipe out. But, um, you know, for us, we find that uh, once a year is often, is pretty sufficient. But you can start telling um, how, what's going on when you're, if your stove starts not drafting as well, if when you open the door, some smoke starts coming into the house and things like that, that to me is an indicator that I need to come up here and check the stovepipe, even if it hasn't been six months or a year or whatever. Um, some preventative things that I do to try and make sure that, that I don't have creosote buildup is I try and burn dry wood. That's a really important factor. And also, another thing that I do is I try and have a good hot fire at least once a day. I, I don't like to leave it cranked way down for long periods of time. I want to build that fire up at least once a day where it's getting this stovepipe nice and hot and burning out any little bits of creosote. So basically what I'm doing is I'm having a little mini chimney fire every day, you might say, except it's you don't even think of it as a chimney fire because it's completely safe. It's not getting hot or anything. or I mean, it's not getting excessively hot. And so uh, I found that to be pretty effective. We'll see. It's been... Uh, at least a year, if not more, since I um, last brushed this stovepipe out. Actually, um, I've found with this stovepipe that I hardly ever have to brush it out so far. We, we haven't been at this location for many years, but so far I've found that just by following those precautions, my stovepipe stays pretty clean. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take this cap off and see how it's doing. And this is kind of a messy operation. I 
I probably should have put gloves on, but we'll just go for it. You can see my cap here is actually pretty clean. It may look a little dirty to you, but I've seen caps that are way, way worse than this, where they were almost completely clogged. So that part is good, and that's, that's the most often the problem area is the cap. So now I'm going to take a bright flashlight, look down here, wow, that is nice and clean. So I'll show you a shot of this, but this stovepipe, I'm convinced, is so clean because it's a short stovepipe. It probably isn't, well, let's see how many sections. One, two, three, and those would be four foot sections. So my guess is it's probably 15 feet or less. That's a pretty short stovepipe and it's insulated all the way up, which is a really important thing. A lot of uh, people will, um, well I say a lot of people, in some old cabins, they will um, start out or they'll, I've seen people go with single wall pipe, just single metal out the top, and that is very unsafe for going through the roof and everything, but there's more to it than just that. You want it insulated all the way out because you, uh, even after you get through the roof, you want it to stay insulated because you want this to stay warm so that that smoke and the, any moisture in there doesn't condense on the stovepipe. You want it to come out in the form of smoke rather than cooling off and condensing on here. So the short stovepipe has really helped in burning those flash fires and dry wood, and I think that's why we have such a clean stovepipe. And honestly, um, the more I think about it, I think it has probably been two years of burning since this stovepipe has been brushed. And um, so I'm really happy with that. So uh, anyhow, let's show you how to brush a stovepipe out if you need to. If you come up here and you look and you see that there's some buildup in there, then absolutely go for it, brush it out, and we are about to show you how to do that. Yeah, it was really clogged. That's, this is one of the major problems. Let's look down the stove. Oh yes, this isn't so bad though. Looks like the majority of our problem was the cap. It is just about completely clogged up with creosote deposits, residue. But the stovepipe, it could have gone a little bit farther. You still don't want too much to build up in here because what happens is if you get too much buildup and your fire gets real hot one time, the creosote will catch on fire. So we'll just take this down and clean it out and we'll get the brush and brush this out. <laughs> You ready down there? Okay. 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 You can already see some creosote has come down. We ended up having to tie a roll of duct tape on the end of this string to help it to come on down. Looks like it's gone all the way down now. The side, the end with the cord on it, I put it in first. When I put this rod on, it will push down pretty easily. But, as I add more extensions on, that rod will start bending and it won't be able to go down any farther, especially if there is a heavy buildup of creosote on the inside. That's where the baling cord comes in. Somebody will be downstairs reaching into the firebox. By the way, be sure the stove is out and it's had plenty of time to cool off. 
uh, we let our stove go out and it was out all night and we paid for it when we woke up this morning. But anyway, somebody will be down in the firebox and they'll help assist me pushing this down by pulling the cord. Be like my power steering in getting this brush down and we'll go up and down several times and then we'll show you how much creosote came down and collected in the firebox. It's not going to be very much because this pipe is not that bad. Okay, here we go, Dad. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, we're going. All right, hold it right there. Screwing on the next section. Okay, that broke it loose. The bristles are sloping down now, so it'll be easy to pull up. Our first segment. I'm going to go in a couple more times. 